It's time again for another installment of The Basics, and this episode was requested by one of my viewers who wanted me to talk about noob mistakes when it comes to the Star Trek CCG. And you might think I'm going to mention the obvious mistakes that a new player makes upon starting this game, but yes and no. So let's get started, shall we? Now, there are the obvious mistakes that a lot of new players make, i.e. the deck sizes are incorrect, they draw too many cards from the start, etc., etc. Um, on today's episode, I'm using two of my decks to illustrate common noob mistakes and uncommon noob mistakes and ones that you should be aware of. On my left is my Klingon deck, on my right is my Ferengi deck. Now, using my Ferengi deck, one of the most common mistakes that a new player makes is not tailoring the cards to the affiliation of their deck. And you've heard me say this on previous episodes dealing with deck building is the cards have to be tailored to that affiliation for the most part for that deck to work in gameplay. So for example with my pretty heavy Ferengi deck I have two to three missions that are tailored for Ferengi I have a few missions that are any crew may attempt that are perfect for the Ferengi. I have equipment that is only Ferengi. So I have Ferengi hand phasers and Ferengi whips for personnel battles and specific Ferengi pads. There are some pieces of equipment in the game that can work throughout the affiliations, but the more you tailor the equipment to that affiliation, the better. I have certain power cards tailored to this Ferengi deck. For example, the Ferengi being slightly greedy, and by slightly is a massive understatement, I have cards like Raise the Stakes and Long Range Scan. I want to be able to get something out of the game at the end if I win, and I want to continually see what my opponent's up to. I want to know what he's doing. I'm greedy for not just compensation, but information at this point. I'm also taking into account the size of my Ferengi deck, what it contains, and why I have it with that many cards. Moving over to a more simplistic Klingon deck, one of the examples I can give of a basically common noob mistake is dilemmas. They don't tailor the dilemmas. Now I understand new players don't obviously get it right away because they're new players, but you can't just throw in any dilemma that looks pretty or looks cool and hope it to work. You have to have dilemmas that work well with each other under either space or planet or the combination one so that when you put them under your opponent's missions they do the maximum amount of damage or stoppage. Too many missions that don't favor the affiliation. So this goes back to tailoring the cards. In my Klingon deck, and I'm just using this one as an example mainly because I have a couple Klingons that have stellar cartography, but you don't see a lot of that in Klingons. And I prefer to use more Klingon-centric missions that only I can complete, instead of ones that have multiple affiliations in the bottom. Also, the Klingon-centric missions are better in the point boxes. This is a big one for noob players, and I had a bad tendency of doing this when I first started playing the game because I wasn't experienced. And that is not enough personnel. You need to have a good pool of personnel to work from to complete missions, get past dilemmas, etc., etc. And this also goes hand in hand with another common noob, noob mistake, and that is too many ships. Now, and this happens a lot with Klingons and Romulans because they have cool ships. You know, you're a fan of, of Next Generation and DS9, and you've seen the Birds of Prey and the Warbirds. Oh, wow, I want a lot of those in my deck. You need a lot of personnel to operate a lot of ships. It's not worth it. Three to four ships in a deck, unless you're playing with Borg or Herogen, is more than enough, or to a lesser extent, Kazon. You have to be able to staff the ships, and the minimum requirements is not going to get you anywhere in terms of a mission or a dilemma. Choose your ships and your personnel wisely. The other big noob mistake why do you not have enough doorways? Doorways are one of the most useful types of cards in the game. They either let personnel from different timelines come into play, they can help you get across the space line, they literally open up doorways to other aspects of the game. Depending on the deck you're building, you need to have 
a lot of doorways. Go back and watch some of my previous episodes on deck building. You'll see what I mean with the amount of doorways, especially in my board deck. Now, that being said, one of the most common newbie mistakes that I didn't really talk about, because I've mentioned this on previous episodes, is too many of one card. Unless the card is Rogue Borg Mercenaries, where the more you have, the more you can do with it, don't use too many of one card type. I once played a guy in a test game who had, I think, eight rescues or Q-nets in his deck. All he was doing was trying to regenerate the same two or three personnel or ships over and over and or use the Q-nets at the same couple of locations and trap me. By then, I was close to winning anyway, so it was a pointless gesture. Sometimes you need three or four of one card, but it all depends on what that card is, what your deck is constructed to play and play as, and what that affiliation is. This goes back again to the cards have to be tailored to the deck. My advice to any new players, get involved in some local circles, test games with your friends, hone your deck building before you start moving up to bigger tournaments. That's all for today. Have a great day, everybody.